finally we have the ocean ecosystems which are the most uh, common ecosystems in the world 71 percent of the world is called is pretty much covered with marine ecosystems since the oceans cover the majority of the planet and before we talk about them I wanted to introduce the idea of aquatic zonation or the idea that the ocean is divided into areas remember that the the major limiting factor in the ocean is going to be the amount of sunlight that uh, the water receives as it gets deeper and deeper it's going to get to the point that no sunlight is going to get down there so the beginning is going to have a lot of production a lot of algae growing over here because there's a lot of sun all right so we call that the photic zone as you, as you see over here it's called but then underneath that you're going to have the aphotic zone and you see that name right there all right and that's where there's no sunlight so there's no algae there there's no production by algae anyways there might be some chemosynthetic organisms producing something here there's gonna be some decomposers in the bottom but the majority of the aquatic production is happening here at the photic zone and it's also going to happen especially close to the continents where a lot of the runoff coming off the continents is gonna carry the nutrients which are necessary for things to survive and make photosynthesis there's also upwelling which is a current caused by winds that steer the stir the surface that carries cold nutrient rich carbon dioxide rich water from decomposition at the bottom of the ocean towards the surface but that current tends to 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 congregate here near the continents as well which means this area in the continents right there is going to be the most productive area of the ocean the, the it's we call that area the neritic zone you see that name written on the top there now the open ocean which is also called the pelagic zone uh, or the it's it's going to be a little less productive but in terms of how much concentration of nutrients and photosynthetic organisms you're going to have but you're still going to make a lot of uh, photosynthesis there because the majority of the world is pretty much covered with that pelagic zone which is the open ocean basically but only near the surface you're going to have the algae as you go deeper there's going to be less and less life because there's going to be less and less food available so and that's going to be um, basically the structure of the ocean now the ocean also has the bottom it's not just the water there's also the land that covers the bottom and that land is called the benthic zone or the bottom of the ocean and there's a lot of organisms that live there especially the organisms which act as decomposers or detrovores that eat the dead stuff because everything that dies in the ocean including the algae will end up sinking all the way to the bottom where they can be decomposed by those decomposers that means that the area of the ocean that actually has the most nutrients is the bottom of the ocean a lot of detritus is back there remember detritus is the word that means the uh, dead stuff that's being decomposed in aquatic e or ecosystems kind of like the hummus of forests all right but either way this is true for lakes or oceans but either way upwelling is going to pick that up and bring it to the surface and that's going to join the nutrients running runoff from the continents which again makes the neuritic zone the most uh, active uh, in terms of photosynthetic or zones of the ocean um, there's also the intertidal zone and the intertidal zone is the zone that's sometimes above water sometimes below water so that's the area that's like doing the high tide is below above below water and doing the low tide is above the water line all right so these are the areas of the ocean now remember the basic facts that you expected to know if you, I ask you what's the most productive area you're gonna have to say is this neuritic zone here this the uh, or also called the littoral zone which is the area where most of the nutrients are going to be concentrated where there's also enough light for you to uh, have photosynthesis remember only the photic zone receives the light there's also the oceanic zone which is the largest area of the ocean where most of the oxygen from the world is actually made even though there's less concentration of photosynthetic organisms but that's because most of the world is covered with that oxygen so while the neuritic zone has more concentrated Product productivity the oceanic zone has more productivity just because it's larger does that make sense it's kind of like saying where are there more trees in the entire United States of America or in the rainforest you may be tempted to say the rainforest but the United States obviously has more trees because it's larger so even though it has less concentrated trees it, you're gonna have way more trees in the entire US and that's the same concept here well, the oceanic zone has more photosynthesis because it's larger but in terms of concentration the nematic zone definitely wins remember though that the open ocean is also called the pelagic zone now the the aphotic part of the pelagic zone has less life especially as you go deeper and deeper into the water because there's less and less food available remember all the production is happening here on the photic zone especially in the neuritic zone right 
But there's also some stuff living specially in the bottom, benthic zones, the detrovores and decomposers that live off the dead stuff, which is where most of the nutrients in the ocean accumulate, that detritus. But upwelling will take that to the surface. One last thing I want to talk about in terms of zonation is that temperature also acts funky as you go in the ocean. In the photic zone, the temperature is pretty much constant. This is what this is graph is here is showing you. The temperature is pretty much constant, so it doesn't change much. But when you get below the photic zone, all of a sudden the temperature drops really quick. And then after that, it barely drops again. You know, So it goes very, very slowly. That's what that graph is showing you. And it never fully reaches zero because the pressure is increasing as you go deeper in, in here. So the pressure is going increasing as you go deeper so that it doesn't really let the temperature ever get too small because the, the molecules are forced together and so that warms them up a little bit. So they never quite gets to zero. So that's aquatic zonation. You're supposed to have learned that in your earth space science. I hope this is a, like a review that teaches it to you what you're supposed to know. Definitely know what's the air that's most productive and that's the open ocean, the pelagic zone. But know that the dermatic zone has more concentrated productivity because there's more nutrients there because that's where the upwelling takes the nutrients that were otherwise going to be in the bottom of the ocean and also where the runoff from the continents tend to concentrate. Also know that in the pelagic zone, the photic zone will have more life than the aphotic zone where there's less food. And that the majority of the life that lives in the bottom of the ocean is either going to be detrovores that live off the detritus or uh, photosynthetic or chemosynthetic organisms that live near volcanic vents. All right. Now, another thing you need to know is there are three kinds of organisms in the in the oceans. The first type is called plankton, and I'm sure you heard about that if you've ever seen an episode of SpongeBob. Now, plankton is basically a type of organism that cannot really decide where to go. The currents take them because they're so tiny that they can't swim faster than the ocean currents. So wherever the currents are going, they're going. And there's two types. There's the photosynthetic version and the, and the animal-like version. The animal-like version, they're all heterotrophs. They have to eat to survive. So they have to eat the algae, which are down here. So they're called zooplankton. And then you have the phytoplankton, which are the photosynthetic ones, like algae and cyanobacteria. They are the ones which make the production of the oceans. And they're the ones that feed the zooplankton. All right? So the zooplankton is going to eat, uh, so in terms of ecology arrows, the food goes in this direction, from the phytoplankton, to, to, to the zooplankton. And then other bigger animals were going to eat this plankton. And that includes the fish that can actually swim and choose where to go. And there's not just fish, by the way. There's some uh, mammals that live in the water. And in the past, there's been reptiles that swam in the waters of the world too. That's the dinosaur era, right? These are called nactons. Nactons are all the free swimmers. They swim faster than the currents and they decide where to go. And finally, you also have the benthos. SpongeBob, Crab, and, and Patrick are all examples of benthos. These are organisms that live crawling in the bottom of the ocean, and then most of them are substrate feeders or filter feeders that live off the detritus that's in the bottom of the ocean. A lot of them act like detrovores or decomposers, and they live uh, off all the dead stuff that's falling from the top of the ocean. So these are the three kinds of animals, and that's the zones of the aquatic ecosystem. And I hope that's clear, and in, in the next video, we're going to talk about the oceanic biomes. I'll see you guys then.